good. Okay, good morning class. Morning. Hope you all had a wonderful weekend. Um, but now it's time to get back at it and learn about our wonderful state of Washington. Yay. Um, so previously, in our previous lessons, we learned about the geography of Washington, the five regions, um, the climate, the different geographical landforms of Washington. We also learned about the Native Americans and the different tribes. We differentiated between the, uh, the plateau tribes and the coastal tribes. Um, so now we are, we also learned about the explorers. Explorers came to Washington State and we learned about their influence on our wonderful state. Uh, so today we're going to learn about the fur trade. Cool. The fur trade, yep. The fur trade. And so the fur trade was the predominant economic activity of the Pacific Northwest. Does anybody know what predominant want to take a guess at what predominant means? The most like used. Like, most popular. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. Predominant, yeah. Because there's that word dominant, right? Mm -hmm. So it's the primary, the the primary economic structure of the Pacific Northwest was through fur trade. Now, what we're going to do throughout this lesson, we're going to identify identify the benefits and the problems of the fur trade, okay? Okay. So are you guys grasping that? Identify the problems and the benefits of the fur trade, okay? We know that it was an primarily economic. Now does anybody want to take a stab at economic? Um, like money, maybe? Yeah. Okay, that's good, money. We got money, okay? Anybody else? You do, it has to do with money. Uh, maybe goods, exchange of goods. Yeah, that yeah, yeah. Trade. Goods, yeah. There. There's kind of a demand, <laughs> supply right? And demand. Supply and demand. Yeah. So, you know, say you're really into like Nike shoes, you know, everybody wants the newest and latest Nike shoe. Mm -hmm. You know, you go to the store and, and what if they don't have it, right? Mm -hmm. So you're, you're itching for some Nike shoes. So that Nike company has to make produce more of those shoes, or they can also regulate it depending upon the demand. Mm -hmm. So it's that's what makes it economic. So if you know that the fur trade was economic, can you take a stab at what the goods were? Mm -hmm. If it's the fur trade, the fur. right there, the fur. Right? Yeah. <laughs> they also they also had a different name for the fur. They called them pelts. Like beaver pelts. Yes, and actually beaver, a beaver was actually a prime, uh, an animal that they went after their pelts. Hmm. And then there were also sea otters. Oh, oh Okay. I have a question. Yes, Phil. Do you know what, like, what was the most, I guess, like, expensive fur? The most expensive yeah, fur? Yeah, like the one that was like, that's pretty hard to find. It ha it have to be these two. Those two? Those okay. were heavily sought after. Okay. Heavily sought after pelts. They also actually went after any, basically any animal for bad fur. Um, okay. But beavers, sea otters, primarily. Cool. Um, so back to this, we got identify the benefits <coughs> and the problems of the fur trade. We're also going to attempt to discover its long-lasting impact on Washington State. So its long-lasting impact. What was the influence and what, what makes the fur trade so important to Washington State, okay? Mm -hmm. So we learned in our explorers, right? We had, uh, we had Captain Cook, Captain Cook, sailed from England and the Sandwich Islands, Hawaii, to Washington State. And what he discovered, he discovered that Vancouver Island, okay, Vancouver Island, remember our Washington State map here, I'm just doing a little Washington. Um, he discovered Vancouver Island was already occupied by the Spanish, okay? 
And when he went on land, he found that the Indian tribes have really nice furs to keep warm during the winter, okay? Mm -hmm. So when Captain Cook discovered that, he, he was like, wow, these are, really, these are really nice. And so what he did is they traded, they bartered. He bartered and traded. Traded and bartered. Kind of the same, kind of the same thing. Mm -hmm. With the Indian tribes. And when he found these furs, he sailed to China. And he found out that the Chinese were willing to pay good money for those furs, okay? Uh -huh. So you have the economic, you have the demand, okay? You have China. He discovers China is paying good money for these furs, and they want them because they have extreme harsh winters over there. And so they are wanting furs. So what Captain Cook discovered is that there was a demand for furs in China, okay? And they were paying good money for them. So money, money is a big motivator for people. Mm -hmm. So money motivator. Um, so with that being said, you had China. They needed they needed people. They needed people to hunt beavers, sea otters, and furs because they wanted to make money, right? So they primarily used beavers and sea otters. Um, now, so we understand that what was the de who demanded the furs? China. China. Mm -hmm. Okay, so China. And we also had another player in the game was England. Okay. England demanded beaver pelts because beaver pelts could be processed into felt. Oh, really? Soft. Or felt hats, and hats were the big fashion. So beaver, think of beaver, think, you know, hats. And they also were nice because it rains a lot in England, and mm -hmm. so they were water. They're mostly waterproof. Oh, cool. um, so, so we have beaver and sea otter pelts, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, and I also wanted to pass out a sheet of paper to that is going before identifying the pros and cons of the fur trade. Mm -hmm. So. We kind of identify a, a benefit or a pro. Um, um, it was it was making money, mm -hmm. so that's. You guys think that's positive? That's benefit. Positive really? impact. It's drawing it's drawing people to the Pacific Northwest because it's established an economy, which then pays the fur traders to either trade or hunt with hunt the furs, right? Mm -hmm. And you know what, it also was beneficial because it actually benefited Indian um, native and settler, settler relations. Some Native American tribes were assisting in the fur traders or settlers hunt these animals down because they know the land. And so that was a benefit within itself too. And I also um, built those relationships and, and assisted them in acquiring more furs. Now, it also hindered relationships because not all Native American tribes were looked upon settlers as friends. They more looked at them as invaders and um, not using the land properly for their for their needs. So, so with that being said, we also have so you also have all these people, all these fur traders moving the Pacific Northwest to hunt fur. Okay. And they are each and every single fur they see, they see money. So they are hunting these, hunting anything. I mean, coyote, anything with that can produce pelt, they're hunting. And then what we discuss is beavers and sea otters are primarily looked or, or sought after, okay? So then you have, what do you have? So if you're continuing to use a resource, continuing and continuing, it's not producing, what happens? Go to it. Yeah, it kind of goes away, right? So you have these animals. Well, let's put goes away, but also we could use extinction. Ooh. So you have animals becoming extinct. And so these ecosystems just didn't have the time to rebuild itself because they were just they were just after them all the time. Mm -hmm. um, so that is another that is a problem. Like a long-lasting impact? Yeah, long-lasting impact, a problem for um, the fur trade. Okay. Um, so it improved, it. it's a pro and con between uh, Native American relations because it did, it did build them, but it also it's kind of 
um, both a pro and con. Um, we had economic impact and what attracted it attracted settlers and other people to the region. So it really put Washington State and the Pacific Northwest on the map. Mm -hmm. um, predominant economic activity. Um, also, it attracted missionaries. Does anybody want to take a stab at what a missionary is? Like, um, they're religious people. I usually try and like um, convert. Yes, they try to convert. So there's a lot of Native Americans in the Pacific Northwest, obviously, that we learned about in our past lesson. And uh, they had a different, they had a, um, a way of life that missionaries were attracted and converting to their beliefs. Mm -hmm. So they had this, they had a job, they had a duty, they had a mission to convert people to Christianity. And so that was another, another group that attracted um, the fur trade as well because the fur trade established permanent settlements. So you have resources and you have um, forts and establishments that attracted missionaries mm -hmm. uh, to get there. Um, so, can anybody identify a benefit of the fur trade? Um, Attracting the settlers to Washington? Correct, yeah, that's a benefit. And the economic increase, the economy boosted somewhat. Exactly, yeah. And what about what about a problem? What about a con for the fur trade? The extinction of the animals that they were hunting for their fur. Correct. Okay. And its lasting impact? Can anybody take a guess at its lasting impact? Um, okay, probably the extinction. Yeah, you could throw that in there. Yeah. Yes. So also, there's also another one. Okay. And we kind of didn't go too deep in detail, but. Permanent settlements was a big one. Oh. It allowed, so permanent settlements and the economic, uh, the economic um, strength of the fur trade really attracted people to the region. Okay. And so these permanent settlements even attracted more people to the region. Nice. And it put Washington State on the map. Cool. So for that, I will pass out your study guide for your test, and that will be it.